This video covers the different forms of linear lines found in the IB Maths AI course in Topic 2 Functions, and this falls under the subtopic of linear equations and graphs. So we're talking about linear lines here, that just means straight lines, and there are a few different forms that you will encounter during your uh, AI course, and they are slope-intercept form, point slope form and standard form. Now usually I will start a question either with form one and two, slope intercept form or point slope form, depending on the information in the question. I very, very rarely start with standard form, but often IB exam questions will ask to leave your final answer in standard form. So I usually start with either form one or form two, and then at the end rearrange my equation of the straight line that I found back into standard form. Okay, I'm going to use this example blue line here on the left hand side and find the equation of this line using both forms one and form two. And at the end of the video, I will rearrange my answer from form two into standard form, this third form here. Okay, let's start with slope intercept form. This is a very, very useful form here. It's in the form y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient of the line or the slope and C is the y-intercept. Now I won't go into the details of how to find the gradient, there's actually another video in this video series called Gradients and, in and Intercepts that covers that in detail, so I'll go through that part fairly quickly. Okay, so let's have a look at this blue line here. I can straight away see that the y-intercept is two, so I can say, okay, immediately I know that C, my y-intercept is equal to two. Let's now find the gradient. Now the gradient, I'm going to use the simple form for this one because I can um, I can see in advance that I will be able to do that. It's just rise over run. Now if I find the rise and the run between these two points here, I can see that the line rises by two and runs by three. So therefore my gradient will be a rise of two, a run of three, therefore my gradient is two on three. Now that I have these two values, I can actually substitute that into my slope intercept form and therefore write down the equation of this line. So the equation will be y equals, now m is my gradient, so it's gonna be two on three, x plus c, which, my, which is my y-intercept, which for this question is two. So there we have it. This right here is the equation of this blue line in slope intercept form. Let's now try to find the equation again, this time using form two. You may be wondering, well, what's the point of using form two, because form one was just so easy. And the reason is um, sometimes, or, or even often I'd probably say, you're actually not given the y-intercept. In this question here, I, I, I did give the y-intercept, but often you don't have it, so therefore you can't use slope-intercept form as easily and just substitute in a c value of two. So let's go ahead and find it, this time using point slope form. Uh, I, I'm going to write down that I know my gradient. I won't go through that process again. The gradient will be the same, two on three. But now I need to find a point that the line passes through. And I know that it passes through coordinate three, four. So therefore I'm going to use this coordinate here, three comma four, and we label it as x1, y1. So that's just simply a coordinate with an x value and a y value, and we just call it x1, y1. Now that we have these two values, let's substitute it into our point slope form equation. So this will be y subtract y1. Now we know that y1 is four, is equal to m, our gradient, which is two on three, x subtract x1. So x subtract three. Now that there is actually a perfectly valid equation of this line. It's, it's not in a form that we would usually leave our answer because an IB question will either ask to leave our answer in slope intercept form or in standard form. It's very rare that they just don't give any guidance to how to leave an answer. But that actually is an equation that represents this blue line. But let's now show how we would rearrange this into standard form. Well, you can see the difference here. In standard form, we need all the terms over on the left-hand side, whereas currently we have some terms on the left and some terms on the right. So we need to do a little bit of expansion to remove these brackets and then some moving around of terms. So, so first step I'm going to do is to expand out the bracket on the right-hand side. So the correct terminology for that is distribute this two on three through the terms in the bracket. So this will become y subtract four is equal to, now two on three, multiplied by x is two on three x, and two on three 
multiplied by negative three is negative two. And you can test that in your calculator if you like. I'm now going to group the terms on the left-hand side of the equation so that it's looking like my standard form. So I'm going to uh, subtract two on three X from both sides. In other words, move this two on three X over to the left-hand side. So it's gonna be negative two on three X. Uh, I'm going to add my Y here because I'm trying to make it in the same order as we see here. And then the negative four, and I'm going to add two to both sides to, in other words, take this negative two over to the left-hand side. So negative four plus two will be uh, negative two. So we're nearly there. Pretty much all the time when a question asks to leave your answer in standard form, it'll ask for the A, B and C values to be whole numbers, integers. At the moment though, uh, we have a fraction as the coefficient of X. Um, so a technique that I like to use to remove this fraction is just to simply multiply every term in the equation by the denominator. You need to be a little bit careful of that because if you have multiple fractions, you need to be smart about what you multiply by. But if you just have the one fraction, I can just multiply this whole equation by three or every term in the equation by three. This will become negative two X plus three Y subtract six is equal to, it'll still be zero because zero times three is still zero. And there we have it. There is the equation of this blue line in standard form. So just to recap, in this video, I found the equation of this blue line using a couple of techniques. I have the equation here in slope intercept form and here in standard form. Now they look different, but they are essentially the same equation, just rearranged differently. Um, so either of those two answers would be fine, depending on what the question asks. Okay, that concludes our videos on the different forms of linear lines.